What if I told you that Ronaldinho has just five pounds in his account? You'd think I'm crazy or something, but that's the sad reality of the Samba magician. Ronaldinho into the area! Ronaldinho! Ronaldinho! Once a dazzling piece of football genius, Ronaldinho's fallen very hard. So what went wrong? The former Brazilian football star Ronaldinho and his brother are being detained in Paraguay on suspicion of entering the country with a fake passport. The Paraguayan authorities said that the false documents were discovered in a police raid on a hotel in the capital Asuncion on Wednesday. Both men deny any wrongdoing. In January 2018, Ronaldinho announced his retirement from football. Fans greeted his retirement with love and affection you'd expect from a player of his quality. But in reality, Ronaldinho's career had ended long before 2018. He had been a free agent since 2015, and the last time he played for any top club in Europe was in December 2010 for AC Milan. At Milan, Ronaldinho was very inconsistent. He produced a string of average performances in between a few good games, and his lifestyle didn't help much. He would party in clubs late into the night, even when he had a game to play the next day. Simply put, Ronaldinho was far from his best years. However, Ronaldinho was crowned football's best player in December 2005. That was just five years before his Milan exit. At the time, he was at the peak of his powers, producing world-class performances in almost every game. Undoubtedly, he was football's best. For most, it felt like the beginning of an era. Or so we thought. In the two seasons that followed, Ronaldinho gradually declined. He became more inconsistent in his performances and endured a trophyless campaign with Barcelona in 2007. His reputation for partying, however, didn't reduce one bit. It only seemed to get even worse, up to the point that he earned a reputation as a part-time footballer. His incessant partying created concerns about his dedication to the club. However, it was his regular absence from training that eventually led to him falling out with new manager Pep Guardiola. Contrary to what you may think, his fondness for the nightlife didn't start at Barca. He was fond of the Paris party scene during his time at PSG and would skip training whenever he felt like it, particularly after his 2002 World Cup triumph with Brazil. Ronaldinho played with a flair and brilliance rarely seen among players. However, his nightlife was his Achilles heel. Ultimately, Barcelona would decide to show him the exit after another turbulent season filled with injuries and more stories of his raging nightlife. The circumstances surrounding his exit were captured best by Reuters columnist Simon Basket, who described Ronaldinho as either needing a new challenge or just maybe the bucktooth maestros truly lost the magic that made him special. And AC Milan seemed like the perfect place to reignite his footballing genius, but Ronaldinho was never hitting those levels again and would eventually leave for Flamengo in his native Brazil. As Ronaldinho's football star began to fade, his off-field exploits took center stage, especially his penchant for extravagant partying. Nights at clubs often ended with fans having to rescue a tipsy Ronaldinho, attempting to salvage his football reputation. However, his on-field magic was a distant memory. The once vibrant dribbler who amazed with insane goals was nowhere to be found. His brief stint at Fluminense ended abruptly after just two months, signaling the end of an era. Ronaldinho's next five years were spent in the world of miniature futsal competitions. The official announcement of his retirement in January 2018, delivered by his brother and agent, Roberto de Assis, marked the conclusion of a remarkable yet tumultuous career. While Ronaldinho was once a football icon for everyone, those glory days were now just echoes of the past. In retirement, Ronaldinho hoped to pull all the controversy surrounding his lifestyle past him. And although he was far from the spotlight, he was never truly far from controversy. Within a year of retirement, he received heavy criticism for his endorsement of controversial right-wing presidential candidate Jair Bolsonaro, who would later become Brazil's president. His true issues, however, came in the form of problems with the authorities. Back in 2015, Ronaldinho built a fishing platform and dock on the shores of the Guaiba River, next to his property, without seeking permission from the authorities. He was sued by the relevant authorities for environmental damage, and after years of legal battles, Ronaldinho was asked to pay up to $2 million in damages. The judge also ordered his passport seized to prevent him from absconding. 
However, that decision didn't stop Ronaldinho from becoming Brazil's tourism ambassador just two months later. In his announcement photo with Brazil's tourism minister, Ronaldinho can be seen with his characteristic grin, albeit much older. But beneath that grin was a man plagued by financial issues with Brazilian authorities. Facing financial woes, Ronaldinho fell behind on payments and struggled to settle his debts. Consequently, some of his properties were confiscated, and a court ordered their eventual auction to address the outstanding debts. The dire situation unfolded after it was revealed that he only had five pounds in his bank account, an inconsequential amount for a player of his caliber. Even after retiring, Ronaldinho still earned a good amount of money from endorsements with various companies and even a decade-long ambassadorial deal he signed with Barca. One thing was clear, it wasn't that he wasn't making enough money, but how he was spending the money he made. Since retirement, his elaborate lifestyle didn't tone down one bit. He still partied a lot, and it wasn't uncommon to see him in photos with unclad young women as he enjoyed the thrills of the Brazilian nightlife. There was also the issue of 18k Ronaldinho, a cryptocurrency Ponzi scheme that promised good returns on investments to members, which of course wasn't the case. And as it turns out, the site used images of Ronaldinho to promote business. This led many unsuspecting investors to put their money into the platform. Although Ronaldinho denied any involvement in the scheme, there's still a belief that he may have indeed been complicit. And the reasoning behind this is not far-fetched. Ronaldinho already had his fair share of financial troubles, so it wouldn't seem unlikely for him to be involved in a scam of this degree. While these were some serious allegations, what you'd probably call the last episode of A Sour Tale came on Friday, March 6, when Ronaldinho and his brother Roberto de Assis were arrested in Asuncion on suspicion of entering Paraguay with fake Paraguayan passports. It was an embarrassing moment for a player who once stood tall as the best in the world, but it's a true reflection of just how far he'd fallen. He was remanded in a Paraguayan prison, pending an investigation. Almost two weeks later, he celebrated his 40th birthday in jail with nothing but a small cake brought into his cell by one of his lawyers. Knowing his love for partying, it's fair to say that this wasn't quite what he imagined for his 40th birthday. But here he was in a Paraguayan jail. After spending well over five months in jail, he and his brother were released into house arrest and had to pay a fine of $1.6 along with it. Which makes you wonder if he was even broke all along. Either way, he could be set to face far more serious charges while his relationship with Dalia Lopez is fully investigated. Ronaldinho, on his part, claimed that he didn't know that the documents were fake and that he'd only received them as a gift from a businessman. However, one of his lawyers comments on the case, who stated that Ronaldinho didn't know he was committing a crime, reveals an even bigger issue. Now, for a long time, many within the ex-player's inner circle have suggested that Ronaldinho had never truly been in charge of his own life and mostly just followed his brother. But at some point, there's gotta be a limit to that. What's even more surprising is that, being Brazilian, Ronaldinho didn't need a passport to go to Paraguay. His Brazilian ID, called RG, would have been enough. It might look like he purposely used fake documents, but it's possible he didn't know they were fake. You could say that Ronaldinho's recent problems are clouding his football legacy, However, people will still remember him as the awesome Brazilian with crazy skills who made football super exciting to watch. If you enjoyed this video on Ronaldinho's unexpected journey, make sure to check out our other videos, like this one on 10 footballers who lost everything.